a little bit rainy outside right now, man, but this is gonna be my two month review on the wide body scat pack. It's treated me pretty well so far, but I'm gonna give you my honest review on it, unbiased opinion. Um, even though I do come from driving BMWs, but I'm gonna try and stay unbiased as possible. So I just moved over to my garage because the rain started to pour down extremely heavy. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you my honest review of the wide body scat pack. First, I'm gonna start off with performance and driving it and how the experience has been with driving this vehicle. Look, I know in one of my previous videos, I talked about how it handles terribly. But other than that, everything else has been pretty ideal. It sounds great for NA, V8. I mean, it stops on a dime. It has these six six uh, piston brakes on it. Same brakes that's on a Hellcat. I mean, it drives pretty good other than handling. The way it sounds, super aggressive. I mean, I get looks everywhere I go. The way it looks at night is insane. But like, back to looking at performance, man. I mean, the thing is, Dodge could have did a better job, but it's a muscle car, man. And you know, this is, it's straight, it's, it's meant for straight line speed. You know, it's not like a BMW or an Audi or any of those cars that's in its class. It's not like that, it's a muscle car. I put about 2,000 miles on the car and I've had zero maintenance issues. It's been driving flawlessly, no issues at all. And I've heard these engines are extremely reliable and easy to work on. So I'm not too worried about anything at that, with that aspect. Um, but like I said, the driving experience, I will give it maybe a six out of 10. Handling is a big deal for me. Uh, like I said, I've been driving German vehicles and cars that are were meant for performance and driving and you know they had the best of both worlds performance with handling so yeah nah like i said a six out of ten on handling for this wide body scat pack i think one thing that may have like lowered that score for me like you know with the handling aspect and the driving experience is the fact that it's so heavy bro and you know when i drive in the rain when i drive in the snow i am slipping everywhere i go it doesn't matter um and then also let's talk about gas uh, so where I live, I live in the DMV area, bro. I was getting probably like 13 miles per gallon city and then highway, I was getting about 20 miles per gallon. So the car is pretty bad on gas, but it makes sense for a V8 for it to be, you know, that bad. And it's also heavy as fuck as well. Now let's talk about the exterior and interior. This is probably one of the best looking sedans on the market right now just because of the statement that it it's, it's a presence on the road it's extremely wide body it looks fat on the road i mean it looks like a bully on the road bro and you know you you when you see this on the road you have to look you have to check if it's a hellcat you know i mean it's just a scat pack but still like you want to double take and make sure that's just a scat pack because this car wide body sits insane bro the exterior gets a 10 out of 10 and also the way it sounds the way it sounds is incredible this is a incredible sounding v8 naturally aspirated i mean i didn't even do any modifications to it yet i feel like you don't even really need to it's perfect the way it is it has a presence on the road you can hear it and i mean it's a, it's a great car from the exterior okay now let's talk about the interior the interior sucks let's be honest i mean i guess i did get the base model but i bought this from the auction um cloth seats terrible and i mean even if you were to get the nicer seats in it right it still looks the fucking same a scat pack with the Alcantara seats, it's still technically cloth. You know what I'm saying? It's just another name for expensive cloth. Uh, but the interior sucks. I mean, I know General Motors, all the buttons are interchangeable. These are the same buttons that are in the Jeep. Same buttons on the steering wheel that's in the Jeep. You know, it's a, it's a basic interior, man. Um, they definitely took shortcuts. These vehicles are mass produced. So what they do is they'll mass produce a vehicle and then they'll go ahead and make all the buttons interchangeable. I mean, they did a lazy job with this. This car is supposed to be extremely iconic. It's a charger, a wide body charger. They really should have did a better job on the interior. It should have came standard with interior lighting. I mean, they're not looking at the competition and seeing what these other auto manufacturers are doing, honestly. You know, they took shortcuts. I mean, this interior is just like, you know, it's cheap, man. It's, it's extremely cheap. I mean, especially for you're paying $60,000 for a, a Dodge Charger. I mean, it should, you should get more and right now i'm getting 15 miles per gallon i don't know if you guys can see that i'll focus it 15 miles per gallon but yeah nah like i said man it's a it's it's a shame that like the interior looks like this they could have did a lot better i mean it's uh it should have came standard with more options and that's the truth 
if you're getting this car you're really getting it mainly for the exterior so i give the interior like a four out of ten like i said i'm used to driving bmws or european vehicles and this interior is just anticlimactic. yeah it looks amazing from the outside but when you get on the inside it's like what the fuck am i in what is this until you hear how it sounds and shit but it's it's not it's not that great man like if i'm being honest the interior sucks bro i mean a five out of ten so i give the exterior 10 out of 10 and the interior 5 out of 10 and then uh yeah man that's that's pretty much it so finally let's talk about my overall experience with the scat pad overall i will give this car a seven and a half out of ten and here's why the reason why i give it a seven and a half out of ten and that's a c that's a c a c grade you know that's not bad right but the reason why I give it that is because it's a good car. It's a good car. Not going to lie. It's a good car, right? But it does have flaws. The interior is whack. You know what I'm saying? The driving experience could be better. You know, uh, it's not everything that I'm used to. And I try to be unbiased. I try to be un unbiased. I promise you. But man, I try to give it a chance. I try to give handling a chance. I was like, maybe it's just me. But man, like the reason why it's at a seven and a half is the interior and also the driving experience. And that's a shame because it's a really good looking car from the outside. It looks really good. I'm gonna take a, well, I'll show you guys, I'll do a 360, show you guys the outside right now. It's raining right now, so I can't be out here for too long. But this is the exterior, man. It's a good looking car, bro. It's a shame that when you get on the inside, man, it just sucks. Let's look at that, man. Thing looks crazy. Wide body scat pack, 2021. I already tinted it all the way out. I was gonna do more to it, but I like uh, stock plus vehicles, you know? I don't like to do too much. But yeah, man, this is it right here. Good looking scat, bro. The rain started coming down a little bit harder than I expected, but basically, like I said, the overall experience isn't bad. Dodge, Mopar, Chargers, Challengers, they all get a lot of hate. More hate than they deserve. It's a really good looking car, bro. It literally reminds me of a Hot Wheel. But, you know, there's there's downfalls to it. And I'm being honest with you. Like I said, a 7.5 out of 10. The driving experience and then also the interior is its only downfall. Other than that, it's an amazing car. If you're interested in getting one, go to your local dealership, test drive it, and then you'll understand exactly what I'm saying. But thank you for watching this video. If you stayed all the way to the end, go ahead and subscribe and drop a like. I appreciate it.